absolute cracker of a game versus Legacy. Beating up poor Tally, but we'll see what he has here up against Palulu as we'll move ourselves into the draft and get the Orianna out of there. I guess I can't blame them. I like the Orianna ban. What Jensen is really, really good at is obliterating mid laners that are not at his level. If you're slightly worse than Jensen, you will not even make it past the laning phase. And on the pick like Orianna, he has demolished him. Great bar tar target bans from Supermassive against Team Liquid already, making sure that they don't get the two really important champions that they've used in their wins. Yeah, especially given how many tanks Armut has played. I think Mordecai is just a really good ban for lots of reasons here. Senna and Nidalee, though, also going to be taken away from uh, Zeitnot and Kakao, respectively. So Zeitnot going to have to show us something else. Probably the biggest question mark is, are they going to give him Caitlyn? It's been a champion that he has been extremely proficient on. He hasn't gotten it yet in the tournament, but uh, will likely snap it up if it's available here. Perhaps Tactical feels comfortable enough on the Ash side of the matchup that they're happy to just trade it off here. But Orn's going to be banned away from Impact, which leaves one more ban here for TL in phase number one. And as the timer winds down, what selection are they going to go with? Maybe Shen. Shen is the one tank one. that's remaining Ooh, here. Azir. You would love to see the Mordekaiser or the Orn into it, but Armut has already had a good game on it. Lilia is available. I don't know if Team Liquid is going to contest oh. for it. They're just going to take it. They're not going to give Broxa the opportunity to show us that he's improved on it. Yep, and uh, maybe Graves here for Broxa just as a response. Get the jungle matchup lined up nice and early. Azir also a good champion for both these mid laners. Balulu very proficient on that champion. Jensen also uh, very good. So not wanting to line up another control mage or something like Twisted Fate against Azir, given how powerful he can be. And uh, given Team Liquid's deliberate style, and especially with a pick like Twitch now being selected once again for Tactical, it does feel like... Uh, the game is probably going to go slow, at least if you're wow. on the Team Liquid side. And they are just going to go for it. This is the team that uh, showed this lane to the world first. Certainly not the first team to use it, I imagine. But uh, they're the ones that have been the most successful with it. And they are going to uh, put their chips on the table with the Rakan and the Twitch here as Wukong will be picked up here for Armlet. What a different kind of draft. Everybody's just blinding their champions. So the Twitch and Rakan, knowing that if anything, Zaytnaut's going to go towards the Ash. No Senna is going to be allowed. So they've already played that matchup they've known how it works we've seen them win it before so they're hoping that they're going to prioritize that pick instead supermassive is going to hold on to their ad and just lock in a very strong hard engaged already with nautilus and wukong you know that they're going to be able to pick a fight wherever they want yeah with the likes of uh twitch and rakan you need something to lock them down leona uh, we've seen into this matchup already but nautilus certainly fits the bill as well uh, TL going to have to pick something up here. I'm guessing it's this Graves that they wanted to pick up in the first round of picks, but happy to take it here because Lilia was taken so early, so extremely unlikely they would ever lose that pick here. And now we'll fall to phase two where we see where Team Liquid want to line up their bands. Zite not notably does not have a champion pick for him yet, so they can maybe pick apart the other half of the 2v2 matchup if they want to. Brox has already had a really good game on the Graves. He has an, an insane KDA on it, but the game really didn't feel like it was him finding the advantages on the pick. It felt like the laners were getting so much work done that all he had to do was just show up, press a few buttons, and suddenly you get yourself a few extra kills here. So I want to see if he can actually accelerate the pace of the game on his own and from the jungle give those leads over to his lane. So Brox's Graves still leaving something to be desired for me, and it looks like Supermassive is going to continue the plan of doubling down on Arma. It's worked two games already, and banning out Impact's top lane Tampi Pool is going to ensure that Wukong gets an amazing laning base. Yeah, so MF uh, going to be the other side of the plan here for Team Liquid, as they're going to take out Lucian as well, something that we've seen in the mid lane, but of course can go just about anywhere and can still be played as a marksman in a 2v2 if you so desire. I also wonder what kind of pick they might be protecting here for Jensen if they don't want to give Lucian over to Balulu and clearly don't want to pick it themselves. With two ADs already, I don't think Lucian's where you want to be going for your mid laner, so that all lines up for me. I imagine it's going to be a mage here for Jensen, but we'll see what pick they want to take now. And of course, who they give counter pick to. Shen's open though, so Impact's going to take Shen. Yeah, that's what I figured was going to be the priority from the very beginning of this draft, but now you actually have the submarine combination with Tactical. Tactical has been super impressive on this roster here in the Rookie of the Year for Team Liquid. And now, not only do you have the ability to give 
Core JJ, just mobility out of nowhere, dashing to the invisible Twitch. Now you have the Shen that can come and surprise you. And against a pick like Jin, you know they're going to be looking to pick on Zaitnot here. So I'm really worried about this marksman. We've already seen that this heavy priority in the bottom lane from Team Liquid translates into picking on the marksmen that are currently in the meta, the ones that are not mobile. Ooh, this would be a nice one. We'll see if it gets locked in, but haven't seen the assassin for a bit. And it is going to be a Kali for Balulu. It's a sick deny pick as well, because you could have imagined that Jensen would love to play on a Kali having a Shen on his team. Being able to jump in, use the Shen ultimate inside the shroud, and suddenly surprise your opponent that way. But it's a very hard matchup when you are the Akali trying to dive somebody that will also have a Shen ultimate protecting them so really curious to see if Balulu can deliver on this pick it's one that we anticipated to be a really important champion at Worlds and now we're gonna see who has the mechanical ability to actually deliver on it all right well Silas is the last pick here for Jensen uh, has been picked a couple times uh, if I read that stat quick uh, correctly and accurately I believe it has not won though so Silas uh, we'll see if Jensen can put a W on the board for his team and his champion as a reminder uh, if you go 4-0, given that it is a single round robin with five teams in the group, uh, you go straight on to the main event of Worlds because no other team has beaten you, very clearly. In order to do that, in order to go 4-0, you must beat every single team. And for both of the teams that are left in this group at 2-0, uh, they will give themselves the opportunity to do exactly that and punch their ticket over to the Worlds main event. So very important game between these two teams. A very cool draft here as well. And uh, as expected, Crumbs, it will come down to the play because I think the teams have navigated this quite well in champ select. I think both teams got what they want here. I'm going to go for the coach's fist bump. There it is. Now, what I'm really curious about from Team Liquid's side is how well can Jensen play this Silas into the Akali matchup? Because there's quite a few ultimates that could be really exciting. You have the Lilia ultimate, which could be incredibly devastating in a team fight, especially if you can buy enough time for your Twitch or your Shen to set up. And you also have things like the Wukong ultimate and the Nautilus. So there's a lot that Jensen can do here. And on the side of Supermassive, I'm more curious than anything to see how they stack against Team Liquid in the laning phase. We know that Team Liquid has world-class players. They can lane just fine. They can get advantages that way. That's what allows them to play a more reserved style because you know they're going to be getting these advantages regardless. Well, how well does Supermassive do against that? Can they actually pressure Team Liquid before they start grouping and force them to think about making decisions before they feel ready to? The other thing, Crumbs, we get to do one of my favorite things is figure out how interactions we haven't seen before work. And my one for this game is going to be what happens when Silas steals Lilia ulti. I imagine his abilities turn into uh, ways uh, spells that can proc the ultimate because uh, it would be very tricky for Silas to use the ultimate regardless, uh, otherwise, but uh, I don't know. And I guess we'll find out if Jensen ever steals it because Silas is a pick that rewards you for understanding every ultimate in the game. Jensen clearly has a very deep amount of knowledge about the game, and I'm curious to see how he navigates this Akali, which if Balulu gets out of control, and this is a man that is not afraid to make the plays, uh, Supermassive certainly could overwhelm the stoic, stone-faced Team Liquid. So we just saw that the refs were showing a little card there to the players. For those that don't know, they're showing a card that just asks if you have actually checked everything that you needed to check. Your settings, your comfort, your water, are you, are you all ready? And the player is just not, yep, yep, I've already done it, I'm ready to play, let's just get into it. So trying to make sure that there are no interruptions inside the game, it's the preparation that matters. Certainly is, and uh, these two teams will have watched uh, the games that have been played by these two already very closely, I imagine. So uh, we'll see if they're prep. Works out on the Rift, because it is the battle to stay undefeated in Group A here in the world's playing crumbs. And uh, again, put, put yourself one win away from qualifying to the main event for Worlds. So a lot on the line. Again, neither of these teams uh, will be out of contention. In fact, I believe they're guaranteed a tiebreaker for first at a minimum if they win here. But of course, you want to do one better than that, as we're going to get ourselves onto Summoner's Rift. Fighting for that very beautiful cup there. Look at the arrows. That's the early game invade plan there. But it's yep. just going to be sitting in the brushes. And you can expect that there's going to be 
quite a bit of action in the solo lanes here because you've got melee versus melee on both top and mid, which usually results in heavy trading. You've got plenty of sustain from both sides and they're gonna wanna just go in each other's faces. So I wanna see what the jungler's pathing ends up being because they can turn the tides of these matchups and as they're not able to farm from a distance that safely, you get ahead on these matchups and suddenly you can continue to get ahead because if you get the Shen, Snowballed. We've already seen what Arma can do on it, and this is the second time on Wukong, who's also been able to not only find kills in the laning phase, but then team fight quite well. I think the other thing is uh, when you have you know these melee matchups in the solo lanes, not necessarily as easy to get the lane pushing the way you want it to, which might actually be a big deal for either of these junglers. They're both pretty farm heavy, both pretty invade heavy as well, and generally when you want to do an invade as a jungler, you need your lanes to be pushing. So. Very curious to see how the dynamic of the top side of the map plays out in this early game, but the Mega Leash from Amwut is on for Kakao, who's going to be flying through the jungle on this Lilia. Rocks are all by his lonesome, though, is going to stay nice and healthy, as Graves is want to do. And they are starting on the opposite sides of the map, so we'll see how this early jungle clear happens as Kakao right now is going to go ahead and clear his blue side. Mega Leash indeed. It is fairly surprising to see that the Wukong committed so much to helping out the Lilia, so going to allow Kakao to start to get ahead of the Graves, knowing that the Graves did not get a leash as the bottom laner and the top laner were already in the laning phase. But Armut's just gonna have to take some early rough trades, heal up with his D-Shield, wait for the wave to crash, and then hope that Lilia can eventually path back to the top side and return the favor of the leash with a gank. This is one of the things though that's really great to watch when Impact plays. Uh, he's so good at the champions he knows very well. Shen is certainly one of those champions and uh, he kind of gets the maximum out of a lot of little trades in early games. And I just like this lead right now, I'm potentially harassing Armut at his wave. He's already built up a wave of CS lead. Granted, that will shrink as Armut last hits the minions under his tower. But that help that uh, Armut gave to Kakao is going to have to be paid back at some point in this game because he did have to sacrifice something early on in the lane in order to get Kakao flying down to the red side of his jungle already. So much about top is about getting to the wave first and starting to hit those levels before your opponent, potentially going for a trade that simultaneously gets you levels and gets you an LN. You're gonna look for a Kali here. One's a bit different. We'll have to flash. I like the pressure. Broxa just mixing in a quick poke mid. Just forces Blue to flash and then he's gonna have to play way back on this wave now. Uh, as it is going to push in towards him at least, but Jensen's going to do what he can to keep the minion wave up and try and deny off a couple of CS. Kakao, though, is going to take this opportunity to take a Scuttle Crab because that's what every jungler loves. And knowing that the jungler is having a free Scuttle Crab here in the bottom lane allows everybody to know that the Graves is also into the top side as well as we have seen him in the mid lane gank. And the top lane matchup, which was one that we were looking at quite a bit, is going to have Wukong recall this early on. Impact has been able to be super aggressive because Graves was passing to the top side. He got to the wave first, was able to just sit there, and now you're going to have a Shen that's just going to prosper against Wukong, already having that TP advantage. Let's see if he can keep it. If he can actually whittle down Wukong with the help of Graves that's still in the top side, you could start to see an advantage in the top lane build up that allows a good TP from, say, a Twitch roam, which feels almost guaranteed to find a kill. How do you even avoid the fact that you're getting surprise ganked by two people from stealth? On the flip side of the map, though, Tactical and Core JJ under pressure from Zeit and Snowflower, who have successfully built up about a wave and a half worth of CS lead right now to continuing to shove waves into the tower as rapidly as they can. Top lane there, here's Kakao. Just gonna show his face. I think he's just getting the wave pushing. This is not a gank of an impact, it is a gank of the minion wave. Yeah, it's really rough to be a top laner and have the wave be frozen there if you don't know where the jungler is. Instead, just gonna crash it. It is such a fat wave. Luckily, Shen's Q is pretty effective at last hitting, but it's not gonna be able to clear it out too well or too quickly, so. A little bit of damage will go over to the turret, but more than anything, the Wukong gets to recall, gets to refresh on his sustain, and Shen stays around, and with the wave being so fat, he might not have a good timing to find a teleport back and spend the gold that he's already earned. I'm slightly sad he moves away. I was excited to watch Impact Plus hit all those minions, but it's able to watch Prox to take the Raptor camp. Likely a little bit more influential on what's happening in the game, and thanks to that bit of pressure from Impact that did allow Broxa to sneak in and take all but this tiny Raptor that Kakao will now go ahead and clear out. So Broxa may be slightly ahead on XP, but both these junglers again very quick through the jungle. So it's been a lot of farming back and forth with the added bit of lane pressure every now and then, but not really slowing down to do anything other than continue to farm, which 
It's fine. Certainly been a big part of the jungle meta early on this world. And in fact, uh, in general, in the last few months of League of Legends. Team Liquid just waiting for level 6s so that they can start playmaking there. We've already seen how big of a carry the Twitch can be. And not having to press the early game when you have this champion is typically a good idea as long as you can get gold on him and know that you're gonna get kills when you have your ultimates available is sound you know that that three item spike that you hit hell even with the blade of the ruined king knowing that the enemies don't have flash allows you to start popping off out of nowhere so i think that team liquid is just playing to the win conditions that they know they have it's what they've been doing all year long they're not looking for anything that's unnecessary they're looking for where they know they are certainly stronger and right now with the bottom lane being able to push back shen has already gotten priority in the top lane so Broxa can start this dragon and know that impact will be able to help him out and if a fight breaks out you know that armor doesn't have teleport as well so this is just a free dragon for team look out here in mid as well jensen gonna go back in he may have taken the bait but he's gonna dodge the swell see but no ulti regardless jensen not gonna nick the akali ultimate flashes out of there has the extra dash if he needs it but that's gonna be for escaping as Broxa does at least take the dragon even though the Akali did not have flash. Jensen did not want to go for a 1v1 with the Shen ultimate behind him because the Shen was under pressure from the Wukong. He didn't have an angle to teleport just yet. Wukong was already pushing the wave back, and so you really don't want to be messing up Shen's wave that way. You want to find him when he can teleport and at least not get the ultimate disrupted. Yeah, and Jensen actually still feeling pretty good in the matchup, but isn't going to have his flash for the next few minutes, but Brox is going to go ahead and donate blue buff to, over to him. He's still got a CS lead. Does the Silas his impact in a brief 2v1. But going to go ahead and clear out the rest of this wave. He's done a really nice job just, again, managing uh, what's happening here in the wave. Going to be a bit tricky now that he's got Tiamat, but Impact's still going to try and deny what Minion T can and keep the wave in a very comfy place. And that's going to force Wukong to walk all the way back top lane without that he's TP. The Wukong is going for the lane swap. They're going for the eight-minute rip herald swap from super massive and with team liquids shen being up here he's not gonna have a big impact with his ultimate let's see what the recalls are because core jj has already made it here but twitch showing into the bottom side tells me that super massive is just ahead on the play and will be able to secure this objective for free wukong is getting some nice farm he's got three recalls off this game thus far yes impact has been able to accumulate a bit of a cs advantage but translating this into a herald that can get some plates for the bottom lane could be a really good move out of super massive considering they have been pushing the twitch and rakan all game long yeah in danger of getting like 3v1 4v1 dove potentially here as well as impact so gonna have to be a bit careful kakao with the blue up and the rift herald is gonna make his way up to top lane with the ulti we know broxer is on the top side of the map and jensen does have tp so team liquid can enter this play if they need to Impact is squishy. He was gone with the Tiamat build, so he's looking to just hard push with his auto attack instead of a bomby cinder. And this is good from Brox. He can either be in the top side to defend the dive or try to be bottom to try to dive the Wukong as well. Now, diving bottom could have definitely been a possibility here. You also have the Shen ultimate if things get really hairy, but you don't also have a guarantee that that's going to work out. And when you're dealing with a Herald as a pushing opportunity from super massive you're never gonna win that push so defending this i think is the right move yeah just uh, two different 2v1s right now called jj knocks up the decoy uh, tactical trying to get some plates of his own oh good grab there no plug gonna let the ulti rip and that's first blood easy as you please for zite not that was really easy <laughs> actually he's very squishy that's a lot of damage and burst that can come out of super massive doesn't allow for the Spirit's Refuge to land and mitigate some of the potential damage coming out. And just a few more autos is going to be low enough to then pop that Herald and get that first brick. This is a really good pace out of Super Massive that Team Liquid is unable to find an answer with thus far. Instead of crumbs, Shen just not that uh, tanky <laughs> with just the tier man. So that's going to be the Herald charging in. First tower gold over Broxta, which impact on his back and Jensen TPing in. He's going to try and make a play happen. A double taunt impact finds them both. And that's one kill. Make it two as Lightnot's going to fall to Broxta. Such a nice use of the teleports and the globals out of Team Liquid there, knowing that Super Massive was going to commit for the Herald push. They punish it now. They are able to get some gold back, so don't let that distract you from the fact that Super Massive was still ahead on that play, being able to get that first turret and continue to get farm on the Wukong there. But you can start to see what the composition wants to go for. Just dive in, have the Shen right on top of you and punish what is now a flashless Jin and a flashless Lily. We'll see the play again. Broxa going in, he's got the phase rush, he's 
just flash in forward, and the smoke screen that catches two members makes it so hard to know whether you should flash or not, so they actually end up getting so much out of it. Yeah, super well combined there with Impact and Broxa. Picking up a couple to keep the gold nice and even. Only 200 gold up for Supermassive, and that's with the first tower and all its plates being taken down. So this is kind of the thing that and the reason that Team Liquid can afford to play the way they do, you know, slowly, deliberately, you know, through the mid to late game and, and just as a five-man unit, uh, because they're so good at trading, Crumbs. They're just so good at keeping the games close. Even games where they're down a couple thousand gold, they're happy to float a gold lead for 10, 15, 20 minutes and know that at the end of the day, they can figure out a way to navigate that late game and just be fine when their composition scales up. So. Uh, you generally need to get very big leads against Team Liquid if you want to beat them. Uh, Supermassive certainly have uh, the ability to win a late game uh, with the compositions as they stand. And they're still ahead in gold in this one as well, which is nice. But it is just one of those things that's always nice to watch. Just when you think you have the edge over TL, often TL uh, have, have a play in mind to balance the game right back up. And it works off of what the champions have in their toolkits here. You see that Shen was roaming down. That's because he didn't have his ultimate or the teleport from that play into the top side. I thought that Supermassive was going to pull the trigger on the Dragon a lot sooner here, but instead Team Liquid's just going to double down on this. They could have TP the Shen to the top side if they really want to save the turret. I think Supermassive is just giving it and will trade for damage and maybe the turret. Yep, he's just TPing to the top side. And it's usually almost never worth it for top laners to be pushing this tier two. There really is not a lot of value, not only in terms of gold, but in terms of opening up the map. The tier twos on the side lanes really don't mean nearly as much as a tier ones or the objective games in the Herald of Dragon. Yeah, and the objective game on the Dragon side is currently in favor of Team Liquid, taking the first two at a pretty quick clip to a potential very fast soul here, and it will be the Ocean Soul. Ooh, the universally loved soul. Ooh, I'm gonna, Does he see oh, him? wow, that's such good use of Fog of War. Oh. Gonna leap out, the plate goal goes to Jensen. Jensen's gonna get out of there, but he's about to be attacked by Snowflower as well. There's the ulti, there's the hook, and see you later, Jensen. Armut's gonna pick up the kill. Damn, Armut is so good. Like, that's something that a jungler usually knows about uh, what the fog of war, what the vision actually allows you to do, but just creeping up onto Jensen. And I wonder what Jensen was thinking being extended in that position. There was nobody to follow up. You look at the minimap, Twitch is in the lane, Brox is just making it back, and same thing with Core JJ. So it was a misposition out of the Silas that Wukong sniffs out, creepily walks behind him, waits for the rest of the team to be ready in position, and then he just goes down. Yeah, it's pretty cool, it just feels a bit greedy. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah, this it's in vision, right? The turret sees you recalling there. Nobody's ready to back you up, so it's a, a good answer from Supermassive. Well, uh, Balulu didn't get an assist. That's the good news there on that play, but very well played from Supermassive to find the pickoff in mid lane. As we return, though, Call JJ is about to get hooked, but definitely dodges out of the way with the W. So Jensen is actually in some big trouble now because having died and burned his flash now really puts him in a tough spot because Liliana Kali with the Gunblade can really gun him down and you'd be hoping that the Shen ultimate would be enough to keep him alive long enough to turn the fight, but there's a ton of burst with these champions at the moment, so he's just going to have to respect it the whole way through. We check him in top lane. Um, after that room to the mid lane, still a little bit down on CS, but not doing too badly, all things considered. Uh, Titanic's already finished for impact, and Triforce is on the way for Wukong. So certainly things going just fine for either side, but it does feel like this is going to be a game more about you know what happens here in the mid game, especially with these fast strikes. If TL can nab the third, that's coming up in two and a half minutes, but. There's also a Rift Child back up for the taking as round two begins. Broxa just barely dodges the tip of that Nautilus anchor, which is quite impressive. That one tends to get people uh, more often than not. So unlike the first Herald, Team Liquid is actually much closer to this fight and ready to answer. The Twitch is already here. They have a lot of strong items, right? Everybody has finished their first build, and you can see that the Zeke's Convergence and Bork out of the Twitch could really be devastating here. You really want the Akali and the Wukong to be able to burst down this Twitch. He's gonna be able to obliterate a team fight, so they recognize that, hey, 
Team Liquid might actually be fairly strong here. We don't need to overcommit for this Herald. It's not going to give us any extra gold in terms of plates. And if we can just prioritize the control of mid lane and the vision that you see that Nautilus is getting on the minimap, they can set up for the Dragon fight. That's going to be inevitable. You want to take that fight. You don't want to give Team Liquid soul point just yet. And this deep vision that you hope does not get cleared out can let the Wukong get a nice little flank alongside Akali. All right, well, Palulu's gonna go ahead and catch this wave in the bottom lane. Jin's gonna do the same as they're both level 11. But with a minute and 10 out from this next dragon, it is time to go set up for the objective. See plenty of control wards on either side as we have a look at the total gold. Cow actually topping the charts today from the jungle position. Yeah, but Lilia just doing a very good job in farming, and especially the plate collection. I think it was that play in the top side where she was able to just lane and cash in so much. Usually, when you have these power farming junglers, what ends up being the difference is who gets to show up to a lane for a little bit, get a little bit of extra XP, some plates, maybe some minions, and suddenly you're now just skyrocketing past your opponent in terms of gold. All right, well, that Rift Herald also glowing purple in Brox's hands, so perhaps it's time for the old drop at mid and run to the dragon maneuver that we've seen quite a number of teams utilize already this world. Tactical also lying in and camouflage here in the mid lane, hoping to set up core JJ perhaps. So in the top lane, Shen has continuous push against the Wukong here. His Hydra is giving him so much power in pushing, and it's going to allow him to have the ability to teleport or use the ultimate, whatever he wants, whereas the Wukong will probably miss out on some CS if he goes for that. So I think that Team Liquid feels fairly confident about taking this fight. They just want to make sure that the setup is right, that the Shen can have the ultimate and have it actually go through. They're going to get some vision down here, clearing out these control wards. It looks like Team Liquid still have plenty Ooh, they're going in. There's a submarine as well, Cordo J going to dive in, but it's Snowcloud that's caught up in the crossfire. Tactical going to gun him down as a result, and Team Liquid have themselves a nice fancy 5v4. Ooh, okay, super massive is positioned if they want to take another 4v5, but it seems really risky to go for them. They should just go for the Herald and for the Dragon, and that's the power of the Shen, being able to surprise you with the team fight alongside the Twitch. They had no idea this was coming. Snowflower had flashed, but it didn't matter. He was going to go down anyways. They can now start this super massive can take this fight. We've seen already teams take 4v5s in an insane situation around the Dragon Pit. There's no Rakan ultimate, so Akali can find an angle. Yeah, Baloo looking to surprise somebody. The dragon getting low. Who's going to grab it? The smite goes down. It is Broxa that nails it. And now Balulu maybe going to go down. He flashes over the wall. Jensen going to find him with his own ultimate. And that insult to injury as he slays the mid laner a super massive. That didn't look like an attempt at a 4v5. That just looked like Akali wanted some kills. She went in with the Jin ultimate, hoping that something was going to happen there. But there's just so much CC on the side of Team Liquid. They did not let her catch a break and end up flashing after her. So she just lost quite a bit and nothing to show from the side of Supermassive. Team Liquid just holding strong to what their win conditions are. Playing around the Shen ultimate, using the Twitch invisibility to surprise a member. You know you have one pick. You can now take a fight knowing that you have an advantage. And this is just methodical pastry. Yes, the, co the gold and kills are low, but Team Liquid is doing exactly what they are meant to do. Yeah, and again, Balu is just trying to get a kill. He can't kill this dragon. Look at how much CC. It just knocked up, taunted. CC'd non-stop and then flash at the very end to get executed with his own ultimate. Nice play there for Jensen. Does have to commit the flash, as you said, but uh, perfectly fine situation for Team Liquid. They grab the dragon. <laughs> In fact, here's the thumbs down to the minion wave. Maybe not clearing it fast enough. Needs to sharpen that Titanic Hydra. But uh, this is, you know, this is certainly the wheelhouse of Team Liquid. So much poise from this team. Uh, but this is getting scary. Even though the scoreboard numbers are a little bit low, the gold lead isn't uh, insurmountable by any means. It's up, what, maybe 2k for Team Liquid right now. But those three dragons, the way they've set up for these objectives, how quickly they can snowball for this soul, how much control impact has over the side lanes, how many ways Team Liquid have to start some sort of engagement, whether it's Rakan or Twitch setting someone up or Jensen stealing an engagement ulti. Even though the game right now is close, it feels like Team Liquid are just waiting three minutes for this dragon to spawn and can 
grow this snowball very quickly in the next, you know, three to five minutes. And, and what's really surprised me here, Pastry, I think goes back to the draft. The fact that Team Liquid was able to get away with the Shen. I think Shen has been such a staple for Impact for years, longer than Mordecai's or Orin has been. And normally I was okay, you don't need to ban it. But when you see that the Twitch is locked in, you have to keep in mind that this is an insane combo. This is really difficult to deal with. And they're letting Team Liquid get away with it. Impact is having a fine showing with the Stand United. And if Tactical can have games on Twitch like the first that we've seen and this one already, this is starting to be a combo that Team Liquid already feels bold enough to blind pick and clearly capable to carry with it. Yeah, it's one thing to pick it. It's another thing to know how to execute with it. And certainly Team Liquid, this is the kind of thing that suits the style they have perfected really uh, over the time as a team and uh, a winner of back to back to back to back LCS championships but uh, even with Tactical being new to this roster he is certainly slotted in to uh, a pretty star-studded role if this is how the world's metagame is shaking out early on a lot of pressure on this rookie to perform on this pick but he's continuing to do so here in this game even though Zyte not keeping the farm and the items close We'll see if Jin can start unleashing his own bullets the next time a fight rolls around. Because we're going to have one, Crumbs, in a minute and 37 seconds. We will have a fight, but if Team Liquid has shown us something, it's that they don't want it fair. They're going to go and do Jin. it again. Play to the wrong king into Shen on oh, top of the 80 carry. Five. See you later, Snowflower. You're now in trouble. There's the ulti out of a going to get chummed up as Impact Baron. will take him down. And straight to Baron they go, Crumbs. On cooldown, they see the ultimates. They know that there's members that are immobile without Flash, without Swifty. So easy. Now Kakao might have an opportunity to steal. His flash is about to come up so he could go in here, but this looks impossible pace for I think Team Liquid's about to get it, but they're gonna turn! Yeah, Kakao's just gonna get peeled away. They're gonna slay him. Roxa having to take him down so easily as Amut spinning around in the back of the team fight, trying to make something of this situation. But there is nothing left but to watch the Baron die and go over to Team Liquid. Surgical precision out of Team Liquid, just knowing how they were gonna play the fight. That was pre-calculated that they were going to turn on the fight. They did not hesitate to look for the Lilia, just turning on her. Now they have a giant goal lead. They've got a Baron that's gonna easily transition into the Dragon. We're gonna take a look at the submarine play again. Poor little Jin. He's got no flash, walking up into the minion wave. Should've just let it crash should have let it come to you but you just don't expect that five members are going to come out of nowhere already we're starting to see team liquid develop some strategies for worlds that other teams are not having answers to let alone play themselves yeah i like how we highlighted how good impact shen is and team liquid have just found a way to make impact shen even more impactful all oh. right good hook there on the rock so they go that's a very critical pick if they can get it but he's not dead just yet but lulu diving in there trying to find the pick off at the gin ulti he's gonna try and catch a struggle tactical in trouble double sleeping coming kakao's gonna set it all up the hook is there make it two quick ones there for super massive streets 112 all over world as jensen is able to find one back perhaps there is the only ulti impact is trying to get in there does flash through perfect executions that indeed is jensen dives through takes down side not takes down balulu and team liquid will not be stopped they're so strong they don't care that you lost the twitch and he wasn't able to get the ultimate off they have so much gold on the rest of the members. They can still turn towards this dragon. Supermass is not going to be able to 2v2 this one. The Silas is way too powerful, but Team Liquid is going to think, okay, maybe they want to take the fight. We'll wait. We'll camp it out. Let's see if the Lilia face checks a little lamb. Will she sniff it out? Just takes her time dancing and prancing, but it will be safe. I don't think it matters. Impact's up in 10 seconds. He's got ulti. I think they can just play the, the 2v2 for now and then have Impact come in. Armut's gonna go for it. They have to kill this jungle. Broxer is low, getting spun and he does get shut down. Perhaps I take it back. Supermassive are gonna take this dragon away unless Jensen can do something heroic. No, it's not. It's Kakao that gets it, but they will get a kill for their trouble. They're actually gonna get two, perhaps. Yes, as Kakao will fall to tactical. So Team Liquid will be denied the soul, but not the kills that come with it. Team Liquid split up at the Dragon. They were not together. They did not expect that Supermassive was going to contest because they did not see the Lilia come through. They didn't anticipate that the Wukong was going to TP and commit to that. And by the time they saw the fight, the Dragon, the Ocean Soul, was going to be able to slow down those auto attacks. So Graves was never able to group up with the, with the Silas. And so he gets taken down in the pit. Luckily, Supermassive stalls out on that. Dragon and we'll Impact later. taunts out. Impact's and relative. No, he's not tanky enough. I take it all back. Sight not. Just gonna put a bullet in his back. Is Impact dead for 40 seconds?
Super Massive still got life in them, and a lot of these plays have come off the back of Snowflower. That one against the Baron, just chilling in that pixel brush, waiting for Team Liquid to face check, knowing what their move was going to be, just getting there a little bit earlier. If they can continue to have that foresight to what Team Liquid's moves are beyond the Shen ultimate, then I think they can find team fight after team fight as long as Wukong and Nautilus are there together. These two have enough crowd control that you can hopefully burst down Team Liquid before the Shen Stand United comes through. Yeah, I mean, Jensen's got three items, though. Tactical's working on his third. I mean, Team Liquid are up 5,000 gold off of all of that. Like, they got the Baron, they got a bunch of kills. Supermassive have certainly delayed the game in a very necessary way, because this lead could have been so much more if Team Liquid picked up the soul and actually executed on the snowball they were looking for. But Supermassive still having that fight. They need to crack this mid outer because there's no room to maneuver at all. We've seen, like, this be the scene of the crime for Tactical, submarining in alongside Shen for so many of the plays in this game. And without space, you know, with no tower to really protect you, even the tier two in mid looking low, it's tough for Supermassive to get out and find that 5v5 with Wukong that you're asking for, Crumbs. As long as they can kill the twin. Ooh, that was a tasty hex flash from Snowflower. Oh, okay. He might have actually died. It had that connected because you know that the Rakan was going to re-engage with the quickness and then the Stand United would have come through. So it was a very scary situation for both teams, but you already know what Supermassive is looking for. The Nautilus does have flash and Twitch does not. So if they can find this rat by himself or at least with the rest of the team Liquid members spread just far enough from him, they might have a window to engage onto him because Zaytna can follow up with a root and that's enough to lock him down and let Akali and Wukong execute him. And you can see how important Tactical is to this composition. Not only does he have the protection of Core JJ with the Redemption and the Zeeks to buff him up, but even Impact is chipping in on the support style itemization. Lock it and Knight's Bowser the Charm is going to land in Core JJ going to shut down Kakao. Snowfall going to be the next one to fall perhaps as they will take down the tower. Here's Nautilus of the out of Jensen. That's going to be a decent chunk of damage. Jensen dominating his arm. Wood's going to spin into the team. But now Baloo over the top. Good stasis there. And he's so low already. That exhaust could not have come sooner for Call JJ as Tactical is now on a killing spree. And Team Liquid don't need the Baron. That's going to crack through the top side. They've had enough. That was so decisive out of Call JJ coming in through out of vision, immediately engaging onto the unsuspecting Lilia. She just gets burst right away. They get an inhibitor, and this top inhibitor is going to be really important for the Baron coming up in 30 seconds. Team Liquid can just reset and go for this once the play has been finished. All right, well, Team Liquid reset. Going to go spend the gold they just earned. It's called JJ, as he often does for Team Liquid. It's going to take matters firmly into his own hands there on the Rakan. As we watch this one again, just instantly in. Oh, so sick gets two members right away. And then at this point on, you'd hope that Supermassive is not thinking about re-engaging. They have no business trying to then walk into a 3v5, but they still take this fight and just give up more members, burn more summoners, just not worth it. This play was clearly won by Team Liquid from Core JJ's engage. And we're starting to really see that Rakan has been such a high priority pick for so many teams. A little damage buff turned out to make him one of the top supports here at Plains thus far. And uh, I wonder how many times Tactical has been past the halfway point in the 15 to 30 minute mark this game. I feel like I always see him camouflaged in mid lane, just hoping to set impact up for another play. And the next one at this point will end the game 27 seconds until Team Liquid get another shot at the Ocean Soul. Baron is back up. If TL just want to maybe trade, give a second Drake over to Supermassive and storm the base from there. And not to mention, there are Super Minions streaming into Supermassive's base on the absolute worst side of the map if they want to contest for this soul, which they need to do to keep themselves in this game. And they need to find a way to kill Twitch, but Tactical has done a phenomenal job with the itemization already. The three item damage spike that you love to see, but then he already has the Null Magic Mantle and the Stopwatch. So even trying to execute is going to be nearly impossible from Supermassive, guaranteeing the Twitch to pop off. The stealth is through. Oh, Kojak here again. He's going to find the three-man charm. And there's Jensen on top of Zynon. He's dead already as Armwood is trying to spin through the rest of the team. A second spin is going to happen with Team Liquid. I think they've peeled enough. No tactical. He is going to go down. But do Team Liquid have the damage to finish off the fight? Indeed, they do. Broxter and Jensen wreaking havoc through Supermassive as Snowflower is going to fall to complete the ace and the game for Team Liquid. They don't need the Ocean Soul. They have the Nexus, Pastry, and Team Liquid very cleanly 
proving to be the number one team in Group A. And certainly looking like it here. One win away now from getting straight into the main event of Worlds as they take down Supermassive to keep themselves undefeated here in the Worlds 2020 play-in. Smiles all around, really cool stuff out of them, showing us that the submarine combination is still alive and well here at Worlds. And Core JJ uh, is the LCS MVP for a reason, I guess. Uh, it felt like, you know, they had that stumble around that fourth dragon, that what would have been the ocean soul for them. And Core JJ decided, you know what? I don't want to wait for another Baron. I just want to end this game. And uh, in end it did as Team Liquid really ramped up in that mid game. And that's the style of play we've known for them. You know, very patient. Uh, one so quick, they forgot to bow, apparently. Impact, impact, be careful. <laughs> there we go. It's hard to remember, they're not on a very high stage and they're just on screens. Are they though? No, yeah. no, they're on a very high ceiling in Shanghai. Exactly. Playing in a fancy skyscraper. It's like a scene out of some action movie there as fist bumps will be exchanged. Super massive, as we said, certainly not out of contention by any means. Uh, ending 3-1 here would still be good for their chances. But Team Liquid are going to give themselves what they wanted, Crumbs. A chance at getting to the main.